Let's begin with the induction of null covering. Noel was one of Wisconsin's best known and beloved ornithologists. He devoted his personal and professional life to bird conservation, citizen science, and ecological restoration. He promoted the efforts of the Wisconsin Society of Ornithology and many other organizations. He also worked for 29 years as a senior ecologist for We Energies and fostered a conservation ethic within the energy <coughs> industry. While I knew many great conservationists, I only met Noel a, a few times at WSO meetings later in his life. But I recognized that uh, he was a key editor of one of the biggest books, books on my bookshelf, and I brought that along today. You'll see his picture with this book. So how many have, have on the audience have actually helped with the production of the Atlas of, of Breeding Birds of Wisconsin? So in a sense, we're recognizing all of you for your efforts. And to recognize that there is a new atlas being created. A few weeks ago, I picked up a hat recognizing that effort. So um, I wish I had known Noel better, but today we'll learn from other speakers more about him. We have four speakers, as I mentioned. I'm going to list them now, and we'll ask the first one just to hand the baton to the second speaker. Betty Harriman is the past president of the Wisconsin Society of Ornithology and also co-editor of this book that I just mentioned. Second, we'll have Bill, Bill Mueller, director of the Western Great Lakes Bird and Bat Observatory, one of the organizations that Noel helped to create. Following him, Sue Schumacher, uh, a work colleague of Noel and principal ecological scientist with with the Wisconsin Energy Corporation will speak. Last speaker for Noel will be Bill Walker, <coughs> naturalist and wildlife educator for the Wisconsin DNR at Horkin Marsh. With that, let's, let's begin with the formal uh, introduction, for the, for the formal induction ceremonies. Betty Herman, we'll start with you. There is a clock up here. It's an old-fashioned one. You don't have to think digitally. Just figure out, where your, figure out where your second hand is and just say, okay, I gotta be off the stage by that number. Of course, that's assuming I can see it. <laughs> Thank you. It's delightful to be here this morning. And Joe, I don't want to disagree with you so early in the process, but I think Noel's here too. Um, we're, it, it's always delightful to talk about Noel and all the things that he did, not only for WSO, but conservation, birds, and the natural world. In fact, as I was thinking of my preparation, I decided what I was going to tell you this morning is a love story. This love story began on an early spring morning, probably a June morning, somewhere near Ithaca, New York, where uh, Noel was in graduate school at Cornell when he conducted his very first North American breeding bird survey. Hmm. Those of you that know Noel know that he was indeed <laughs> one of the best at the breeding bird survey. Now there are several reasons for that. The <laughs> protocol that was put together for this program, the breeding bird survey, could not have suited Noel any better if it had been designed specifically for him. How does it work? Each breeding bird route is 24.5 miles long. It's a driving route that you stop every half mile, get out of your car, stand there, maybe take a few steps, listen and look for three minutes, record all the birds you can identify by sight and sound, get back in your vehicle, drive to the next stop, and repeat for all 50 stops. So first, driving the route, rather than having to do a great deal of walking, was right down Noel's alley. 
Even when he was young, but as he got older, it became even more and more important to him that he could do this without having to walk through uh, swamps and bogs and climb mountains and whatever. Secondly, most of those bird identifications made by anyone running these routes is done by ear, not by sight. It's a very small percentage that's done by sight. And there isn't a single person in this room that ever birded with Noel that did not become aware very, very quickly that he had one of the best sets of ears for identifying birds in the entire country. He could hear them further away. He could pick apart that dawn chorus and identify the individuals. He could tell how many of a particular species were singing. So that aspect was perfect for Noel. Uh, thirdly, you had to start this whole procedure a half an hour before dawn on an early June morning. And around here, that half an hour before dawn is probably 4.30ish or so. That didn't bother Noel a bit. He rather enjoyed it. He liked that time of day. And, and he frequently got up around 3 or 3.30 to drive an hour or so before he started his route. And at, to him, that was fun. It was a great time of day. Not so much me, but he loved it. So that's another characteristic. And then fourthly, he loved the collection of the data. This would be, his data collection would be in, added to that of hundreds, if not thousands, of other individuals doing these routes all across North America year after year after year. So that the North American Breeding Bird Survey gives us the best big picture estimate that we have of what the populations of individual species are doing. Are they declining? Are they increasing? Are they shifting east or west? Are they in trouble? Are they doing well? And he was, Noel was very thrilled to be able to contribute to this collection of knowledge about the birds, which in turn leads to good conservation decisions for the birds. And finally, and I think this is the real kicker that cinched the love affair, it was the most important feature of the whole thing, I think, to Noel, was that he did this as a volunteer. No BBS route runner ever does it for pay. It's volunteer work. You don't have to be a professional ornithologist or a scientist working at some university or or anything like that. If you are a qualified amateur, remember the Latin, for the love of it, a qualified amateur, you can be a citizen scientist. And that was the central core to Noel. In all of the things that he did for nature and for birds and for conservation, he always promoted the fact that each of us could get out there and do it too, in one way or another. Maybe we got, have, are too old to do it physically, but by now we have some money we can give to the cause. Maybe we don't know bird songs, but we could record data. We're good at the computer, so we can enter all this stuff for somebody else. There are ways, if you'll only be as inventive and creative as Noel was, with how to do it. And I think that really was the cinching concept to him. He may have been the citizen scientist before the BBS came along, but he certainly matched up well with it and became that in almost everything he did. He told me more than once that to him a BBS was like Christmas morning. Each stop was a package under the tree to be opened for three minutes to see what you would get. And you never knew what was going to be at that stop or the next stop. So when he did those routes, he was giving himself the gift of that many Christmas mornings. And as long as he did that, even the final years, it was still a thrill and exciting to him. As his 30th year of doing this process of the BBS neared, he decided that he had to celebrate it in some way, do a little something different. And what he came up with, he called Quad 30. In the 30th year, do 30 routes on 30 mornings and raise $30,000 for bird conservation. Well, his 
running routes, it's often um, canceled due to weather. You can't do a BBS route if it's too windy. You can't do a BBS route if it's raining too hard. So to guard against this, he programmed in three extra mornings. And apparently Mother Nature was impressed because she uh, did not cancel any of his mornings. He wound up doing 33 routes in 33 mornings, two in Ohio, uh, six in Wisconsin, the rest in Minnesota and northern Michigan. And he earned over $50,000 for conservation. He paid all his own expenses. None of the expense money came out of the donations. <clears throat> to me, this is indeed a love story. And it exemplifies Noel's attitude about what the average person can do to preserve our world and protect our birds and help us all enjoy it into the next generation. Bill, come tell us some more about what Noel had in mind. So, uh, unfortunately, because I don't have the computer in front of me, you're going to see me turned around a lot uh, so that I can read along with you. Uh, someone wrote this summary uh, about the time of Noel's death, and you've, you've seen this information multiple times before. Uh, a well-known and beloved Wisconsin ornithologist, he devoted his life to bird conservation and citizen science. but. There's something beyond that. What, what really made him tick? He served on the board of all of these organizations, the Zaki Washington Land Trust, River Edge Nature Center, the Urban Ecology Center, the Mequon Nature Preserve, and for many, many years on the Wisconsin Society for Ornithology. But there's way, way more to it than just that enumeration of facts. He founded the Western Great Lakes uh, Bird and Bat Observatory in Belgium, Wisconsin, which I am currently the director of. Uh, kind of had me by the throat sometimes, making sure that I was going to do exactly what he wanted to do uh, after he was gone. Uh, he was instrumental in the creation of the Bird City Wisconsin program, which is an amazing, innovative program, uh, now being, uh, just for the first time, just within the last year or so, starting to be duplicated in other states as well, which uh, incorporates uh, uh, citizens from communities from, um, I think there's 90 some communities in Wisconsin that are bird cities now. Uh, you've already heard about how the, he was co-author and uh, senior editor of the Wisconsin Breeding Bird Atlas. Uh, during the last year of his life, uh, when his health was uh, deteriorating more and more. Uh, Noel went into the office, he had an emeritus position, went into the office almost every day. Uh, he was a little bit relaxed about the start of the morning, of course, uh, usually went to get his coffee first. And, uh, but even when he was uh, getting sicker and sicker, he still put in more work in the average day than a lot of people that I know that are in their 30s. So, there's much more behind all of these facts. I can continue to list some of these accomplishments. He was a senior terrestrial ecologist for We Energies for nearly 30 years until his retirement. He was the founder of the River Edge Bird Club, which has since been renamed in his honor. It's now called the Noel J. Cutright Bird Club. He was twice president of the Wisconsin Society for Ornithology, and he held other positions on their board of directors as well. As well, he was conservation chair of that organization before I was. Uh, he was a leader in establishing Wisconsin Bird Conservation Initiative, which is an umbrella group of over 175 partner organizations around the around the state, uh, really all working with a common goal of bird conservation, and. Uh, again, in those, second, in those last few years, uh, I can't begin to tell you 
the amount of time and energy that he devoted to the second breeding bird atlas. Uh, we would not have uh, the excellent results that we have. He didn't get to see us start it. We did the first year of the second uh, atlas last year. In the first year alone, we've confirmed 215 species for Wisconsin. Now, some people who uh, attend uh, training sessions that uh, Mike Reese and I conduct, they sometimes say to us, well, you know, does that mean since it's five years long, you're gonna find a thousand breeding species in Wisconsin? <laughs> no, it just means we've had an exceptionally good first year. But there's much more work to be done, and Noel was continually reminding us of that. Uh, he received numerous awards. He, he uh, got a Lifetime Achievement Award for citizen-based monitoring from uh, the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources in 2007. He received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Gathering Waters Conservancy in 2010. And uh, here's an old photo of uh, uh, probably an early WSO convention that he was a part of. Uh, but throughout, you kind of see this theme that I'm trying to develop here. He had this really steadfast kind of organizing principle to work with as many people as possible to get this work done. And if you were the receiver of a sideways Noel bear hug, you usually didn't get to walk away until you said yes to whatever his request was. <laughs> More awards. Got several achievement awards from the Wisconsin Society for Ornithology because he, he just was incredibly active in, in that organization over many decades. He received the first annual Lori Otto uh, Memorial Award from the Milwaukee Audubon Society in 2011. And uh, very special, he received the DNR Special Recognition Award in 2013. Uh, that's a great picture that Kate took. Uh, uh, it was a favorite thing of his in those last few years when he wasn't able to walk as far. Uh, we had golf carts at Forest Beach Migratory Preserve and you could often find him out on the trails. But a few things emerge from I think what, what Noel, the scientist, would want us to do is a careful study of Noel. He was committed to achieving practical conservation of wildlife and biodiversity and natural areas. And he was interested in working with many diverse groups of people to achieve those goals. Uh, this past winter, his widow, Kate, uh, said to me, this is a good thing to remember. When the clock is ticking, what do you spend your time on? And his answer was always the same. Our good friend Sumner Matson uh, suggested that I mention a few things. Uh, since we were limited to four speakers, so we're kind of cheating uh, by uh, me giving some of Sumner's reflections on Noel, which are really apt. Uh, he writes, as a DNR ornithologist, I had the distinct privilege of working with Noel and getting to know him well during his nearly 30 year stint as ecologist for We Energies. He served on the, the board with him, and there was an added, added bonus, Sumner says, when they kicked off the first breeding bird atlas. Sumner writes, early in my career, Noel as taskmaster was on full display. His role was to remind me constantly to do more for birds, to think outside the box for bird project funding, and to place conservation of Wisconsin birds above everything. If I wasn't thinking bird conservation 24-7, then he might say to me, another job, rookie, might be in order for me. 
It was a little bit like the relationship between a drill sergeant and a new recruit, or maybe between Spartacus and Julius Caesar. A tireless advocate for Peregrine Falcon and Osprey recovery in the state, he was very proud of the role we energies played in erecting platforms in southeastern Wisconsin. He was always encouraging me to get out and see the We Energy's handiwork. One such platform was installed on the west side of the Cedarburg Bog Golf Course. No matter that I didn't play golf, he said, go out and play around. Look westward when playing holes three and four, and you'll see the nesting platform just above the treetops. Do it! Noel, if anything, was the conscience of the bird conservation community in Wisconsin, which included the DNR. From prodding the DNR to be exhaustive in developing bird management plans to advocating strongly for all bird conservation, he demanded total commitment to achieve those goals. Accordingly, he was unrelenting in his expectations and was never one to refrain from sharing his uh, rather sharp opinions. Uh, sometimes during his, you might say, adversarial role, uh, Noel commanded great respect within the department for his renowned dedication to bird conservation. In a surprise ceremony during Noel's finally, final appearance on Larry Mueller's radio show in October 2013, Noel was presented with the department's special recognition award honoring his outstanding leadership, exceptional service, and consummate passion in conserving Wisconsin bird populations and their habitats. It's important to remember that Noel kind of viewed the department as the wayward uncle who sometimes drives his car into the ditch. Uh, shortly afterward, about a month after he passed away, or before he passed away, Noel thanked me for my role in receiving the department award. I'll never forget his last email. The email itself contained only seven words. Thanks for your huge role in this followed by a half a page of exclamation points. In reply, I thanked him for all he did for me and for our birds. And Sumner recently reminded me uh, that one of the defining characteristics of him was his sense of humor. So this is a graphic that, uh, that Noel shared with Sumner and many of us have seen in one context or another over the years but I'll leave you uh, with remembering, you know, if you're working in the field of wildlife biology, on the upper left there, uh, that might be what your friends think you do, and in the center, uh, something more akin to what your mother thinks you do, and then uh, uh, the famous gentleman in the upper right, that's what society thinks we do, and in the lower left, what Hollywood thinks we do, and what I sometimes perceive myself as doing, which may or may not be actually true, and then what I actually do on the lower right image. So I'll leave you with that and turn uh, the podium over to uh, Noel's longtime colleague, Sue Schumacher. in his spare time. <laughs> I worked with him for a number of years, and uh, I'm privileged to be here to speak of his accomplishments at We Energies. He worked for We Energies for 29 years. Then when he retired, he continued as the first and only emeritus employee for the company until his passing. <laughs> when We Energy submitted a nomination letter for Noel, we had to pare it down really hard to be only five pages long. I could speak about his accomplishments for well over an hour without even trying. So I'm going to start with some of the examples of what Noel accomplished at We Energies. I'm going to start with a global initiative. Um, in the early 1990s, Noel helped to create a nonprofit organization called Utility Carbon Company. It consists of about 40 different electric utilities nationwide. Noel also served on the board of directors. And the purpose of this company is to sponsor a variety of long-term projects for forestry that would sequester greenhouse gases. So things like tree planting, forest preservation and management, as well as research efforts, both domestically and globally. 
Shortly after this accomplishment, the United States launched the U.S. Initiative on Joint Implementation. This is a program that is meant to encourage private sector investment in reducing or sequestering greenhouse gas emissions while also promoting sustainable development. In the following year, Noel saw the advantage. He saw what could be done. He led the efforts of We Energies and Utility to develop two of the first seven projects that were approved under this natural, uh, national program. Without Noel's leadership and his coordination, these two projects would not be continuing on until today. And I'll speak of one of these projects, the Rio Bravo Carbon Sequestration Pilot Project. He was always big on big titles. This was the first of its kind partnership between We Energies, three other utility companies, the Utility Carbon Company, and the nonprofit organizations Program for Belize and the Nature Conservancy. These partners have purchased to date a total of over 260,000 acres of endangered moist subtropical broadleaf forest in Belize that was threatened by imminent conversion to intensive agricultural use. Now called the Rio Conservation Management Area, the carbon sequestration and sustainable forestry management programs are expected to mitigate approximately 2.4 million metric tons of carbon over 40 years. It's been in place now for over 10 years, 15 years now. <laughs> Since carbon emissions know no natural boundaries, this program in Belize pays dividends worldwide. And he was one of the people that founded that project that continues today, and the company is still participating in it to this day. In addition, the land that is protected contains culturally important mine forests, it's part of a major biological corridor, it's key to biodiversity conservation in Central America, and home to a number of different endangered plant and animal species. Of course, forest management, this land is actively managed. It provides substantial environmental developments, uh, substantial environmental benefits related to soil erosion, water quality, and habitat. And he was instrumental in creating this groundbreaking international partnership for these global benefits. And he also led We Energies to a closer relationship with Program for Belize. He worked directly with Program Belize and brought in some other utility companies to start a sustainable forestry pro uh, program in Rio Bravo and to explore other sustainable products to get local folks looking at other products than intensive corn or wheat. They looked at medicinal plants and their extracts and nut propagation. They did research on ways for small farmers to be able to have a small plot of land, be able to grow mahogany for their grandchildren, and yet still put food on the table every night. And they shared all this research with the local farmers. More locally, Noel's work with We Energies directly benefited the environment in our state. We Energies owns land throughout Wisconsin and the Michigan UP. And Noel was always the advocate throughout the company, throughout his time there, for the protection and enhancement of these lands. He identified those lands that have important natural resources that should be managed and protected. Whenever possible, he would broker the donation or sale of these lands to uh, the organizations that had the resources and facilities to protect and manage the lands perpetually. And a couple of examples of this work. He brokered the involvement of the Trust for Public Land to sell We Energy's land to the Fish and Wildlife Service. You wouldn't think it was difficult to sell land to the federal government, but it is. He actually brokered that agreement and resulted in having the sale of 2,000 acres of land, which includes the Sturgeon River Gorge, to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. And this is added to the federal Sturgeon River Gorge Wilderness Area in the Ottawa National Forest in the UP. This land is now permanently protected from development. His participation was also critical in recognizing the value and significance of the Spread Eagle Barrens property owned by We Energies. This is in the Florence County area. The site has a rare bracken grassland barrens ecosystem, as well as a lot of associated forests and wetlands. Noel encouraged the company to sell over 400 acres of this land to the DNR, and it's now permanently preserved as the Spread Eagle Barrens State Natural Area one of the largest landscape scale natural areas in the state. We Energy still owns a portion of this land, and we work with DNR 
uh, to use adaptive management techniques such as fire and logging. We've also put it into a conservation easement as required by Noel to make sure that this land is perpetually uh, protected. In 1996, Noel led a Wee Energy's team in collaboratively negotiating the first of its kind Wilderness Shores Settlement Agreement. This affects over 65,000 acres adjacent to some Wee Energy's hydroelectric dams up along the Menominee and Brule rivers. Noel managed to do this by brokering agreements between the Michigan and Wisconsin DNRs, the National Park Service, the River Alliance of Wisconsin, and the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and got all of these different agencies to come to an agreement on how this Wee Energy's land should be managed, and then got it approved by the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. That in and of itself is amazing to get that many parties to the table to agree to manage 65,000 acres for, the, for its protection over long term. These 65,000 acres are now known as wilderness shores. They're undeveloped, except for the dams and their associated equipment, and some access roads. 300 miles of shoreline is now protected from development, and there's an established no-cutting corridor along it to protect uh, vegetated buffer along the water. 24,000 acres of this land is retained for public recreational use and more than 4,000 acres of the land is designated for management to encourage biodiversity and old growth forest. All is a direct result of Noel negotiating with all of these agencies and convincing We Energies, an energy company full of engineers, to agree to protect this land in this manner. And as I said, this is open to the public for everyone to enjoy. Now, not only did he work on large global and large statewide types of projects, there were literally dozens of smaller projects that he worked on. There's a small prairie, wet uh, mesic prairie called the Bain Station Prairie that has endangered orchids. And Noel was one of a team that maintained this prairie to encourage this endangered species growth. He helped to restore and create 12 small marshes in the Manitowoc and Sheboygan area uh, in those counties. He uh, got We Energies to donate land to the Nature Conservancy in Kenosha to protect sand dunes along Lake Michigan. Uh, he also got We Energies to donate land to uh, the Des Plaines River Cons uh, Conservatory of uh, restored wetland prairie and savannas. So he's done a lot when he's actually been working as well as when he's had his spare time. He also did a lot of avian work for, the, for We Energies. As Bill mentioned, he did a lot of work with peregrines and osprey. Uh, he, he also worked at State Fair every year with the Raptor program, making sure that we had outreach to families. And he was the environmental conscience for We Energies. While he's best known for his extensive work in ornithology, he was involved in so many other conservation efforts for We Energies and throughout the energy industry. He worked tirelessly, he interacted with families, he interacted with engineers, and never shall the twain meet. Um, he was focused on restoring, improving, and protecting our ecosystems at both a global and a local level. And I'm very pleased to have had the time to work with him. Now I'll turn it over to you, Bill. This morning, I heard the cranes calling, and that's because others cared enough to make sure they always would. And for those who listened, this season will always have its music. And I know Noel was one who would always listen. Before I actually begin, I would just want to say this with some reluctance, perhaps, that I'm going to speak my mind, but in recent conversation with my good friend Sumner, he said, Noel would want you to do this. So. I'll speak my mind, though I know people like Noel always spoke his heart. We are here today to honor two more conservationists at the Hall of Fame that remembers and highlights the important work of so many great leaders who fought to protect our natural resources. From John Muir to Alda Leopold and Gaylord Nelson, Wisconsin has produced some of the greatest figures in our history to enlighten the public about our natural heritage and protect our water, wildlife, and the land on which we all depend. 
Gifford Pinchot, the founder of the U.S. Forest Service, lived by the utilitarian ideal that our natural resources should provide the greatest good for the greatest number of people. Today, it seems that this has been redefined to provide the greatest good for the greatest political donors as the influential and powerful attempt to privatize these resources and exploit them for personal gain. And political influence over natural resource policy has reached a new height as those in charge to protecting and managing these resources work tirelessly to undo those protections. The sad fact is that Wisconsin isn't so much open for business as it's up for sale. This is not a new battle, but with a shrinking resource base, a human population approaching 8 billion, and an ability to alter the land at a rate and on a scale as never before, we need voices and champions for conservation as never before. For we seek to protect and save those things that are not just precious to a few of us, but those very resources on which we all depend for our lives and sustenance, as well as our spiritual well-being, whether the vast majority of people actually take stock of this or not. This has always been the objective of those champions who fought to protect what most of us take for granted. Now let me tell you about one of those great conservationists who I was fortunate enough to know and work with. Noel Cutright was my friend, a fellow ornithologist and birder, and my partner on Wisconsin Public Radio. He's perhaps best remembered for his devotion to surveying birds, including the countless Christmas bird counts and breeding bird surveys he undertook. He also was a tremendous conservationist and advocate for sound management of our avian resource. I knew Noel from many different projects, committees, and it seemed that whenever there was a discussion, meeting, or project involving bird conservation somewhere in the state, he was there. From the formation of the Wisconsin Bird Conservation Initiative and Bird City to the Breeding Bird Atlas and so many other projects, Noel was a familiar face. While he may not have considered himself to have been an educator, his time with birders around the state, with members of the River Edge Bird Club, and on public radio was devoted to encouraging appreciation for birds. He strived to provide information about their life histories and management, and these efforts were essentially educational in nature. While I knew Noel in a variety of capacities, we worked most closely together with public radio. This tradition began sometime in the mid-1990s when Sam Robbins, another giant figure in Wisconsin ornithology, was a guest on the midday show on most major holidays. Following Sam's passing in 2000, Noel and I were asked to continue this holiday tradition. Beginning in that year, we were on the air for the Larry Miller Show every Memorial Day, Labor Day, and Thanksgiving, and often on the 4th of July and New Year's Day. The show provided us one and a half hours time to talk about Wisconsin birds and answer a wide range of questions from interested listeners. The audience has been estimated at around 125 to 140,000 listeners, which provided us an opportunity to speak with more people in that short time than I could reach in a decade of field trips, lectures, and programs. Noel brought to the show his knowledge of bird surveys, population trends, and also recent rare sightings around the state, and he often had information about websites and other sources of information to learn more. When it came to general questions about Wisconsin birds, we took turn answering these and always had a wonderful rapport as we shared time to delve into our shared passion. It seemed that our knowledge and experience of birds was very complimentary and provided the basis for unique chemistry that we brought to the show. Altogether, we estimate that we conducted more than 75 programs over a period of 13 years. One of the greatest compliments we received was when I was speaking at the River Edge Bird Club, now known as Noel Cutright Bird Club. During the general meeting, Noel mentioned, that, uh, mentioned about our radio show and pointed out that on this particular evening, both of us were in the room. Someone asked what it was like to be in the studio, to which we replied, we'd never been in the studio together. And in fact, Noel had never set foot there. It turned out to be such a compliment to us that nearly all the people in the room there had no idea that we never saw each other and were doing the show from re separate remote locations. I think it pointed out the wonderful chemistry we had that he could be in Port Washington, I in Horicon with a host in Madison, and yet it appeared to the listeners as if we were sitting side by side. I recall Larry Mueller thanking Noel and myself for always taking our holidays to come onto the show, to which Noel replied, he simply wished there were more holidays. <laughs> it usually followed that after most shows, I would call Noel and we would reflect on the program and some of the questions we had. We always talk about trying to make the program more relevant to the broader audience rather than simply answer a question for a single listener. 
I also remember how we would laugh at what seemed like a recurring theme for the show. The host would tell the audience to call in with their sightings or questions about something they heard and that the experts would be able to answer those questions. We would then be presented with a vague description of something cited, no one would ask for more details, and then reply that he wasn't sure, and I would have to admit that I couldn't provide an answer either. This would be followed by another caller describing something they'd heard, such as a chirp chirp tweet tweet. We would occasionally even ask the audience if they could help, and then move on to the next question. I remember on one occasion, Noel simply saying, I have no idea. <laughs> Noel has made us wonder why they would ask us to come back time and time again when we couldn't identify what people were seeing or hearing. Of course, it's difficult to provide an answer to an obscure description, and we always try to encourage listeners to look and listen closer to the birds around them. Thinking back, it was a great experience to share this time with Noel. It was always a wonderful opportunity to be able to talk about Wisconsin birds with not only avid birders across the state, but also with a wide range of non-birders who simply had an interest or curiosity about the birds they saw. I will never know the impact we may have had, but we always look forward to those holiday shows. I also recall a day in July of 2013 as I sat at my computer at home. I saw an email come in from Noel Simping saying, I have something I want to talk to you about. Call me as I'd rather not discuss this by email. So I finished up what I was working on and called Noel only minutes later. When he answered the phone, he simply said, I just came from my oncologist and he gave me six months to live. I knew that Noel had gone through two previous treatments for cancer and that chemotherapy, as for nearly everyone, was hard on him. However, at this time, it was determined that no treatment could stave off this aggressive recurrence and his time was limited. What do you say to a friend when you receive that kind of news? About six weeks later, we again were on public radio with her, for their Labor Day show. We talked about birds as we had so many times before, and as if we had all the time in the world to do so. However, the reality was quite different. And after the show, I contacted the producer and made a special request. I said that for all the years we had done this show, we had never been in the studio together, and I wondered if we could do this at least once. I was told that it's a general policy not to have the same guests on twice in the same month, but considering the circumstances, they would gladly make an exception. So in early October, I met Noel at a park and ride outside of West Bend and drove him to Madison. We had a wonderful ride together and a long conversation. At the studio, we enjoyed a program as always and talked as if there would be more to come, but in the back of our minds, we knew better. At the end of our show, our friend Sumner Madison and a DNR administrator came into the studio to give Noel a Lifetime Achievement Award on the air. It was gratifying to have honored him in several ways on that special day. This was our last show together. On the ride back, we continued our conversation, and this was also the last time I saw him. Afterwards, Kate told me how glad she was that we did this for Noel, since only two weeks later he began to decline and would have been too weak to participate. I too am glad that I made these arrangements that we finally had an opportunity to do a live show together in the studio. For what regrets would I have had had I not done so? In retrospect, I want to thank my friend Noel, with whom I shared so much time talking about a subject of interest to both of us, birds, and the chance to share that interest with literally thousands of people. I feel that we had a rapport that I've not been able to duplicate since, and it was a distinct pleasure for me, which I always cherish and remember. I also, of course, want to thank all of you for allowing me the opportunity to reflect on these experiences and honor Noel today. Thank you, Betty, Bill, Sue, and Bill for those uh, kind words and uh, thoughtful words. Uh, I think we've learned a lot more about Noel Cutright than perhaps we thought uh, possible, but uh, I especially enjoyed your, your, your closing comments, Bill, that uh, those special times together in the field and or talking about birds uh, can really make great friendships. Before I forget it, just as a request, uh, given the excellent presentations we're having, I would like the, our speakers to 
you to drop off their prepared remarks if you have something written and or send to me by email your comments. Uh, likewise, Jim, if we get those PowerPoints, uh, we'll add those to our archive, archives for future use. Okay, at this point we'll move to the legislative citation. Uh, I would invite, and I don't know who decided to do who, uh, Katrina or Julie to join me on stage. Who is going to present the citation? Where's Katrina? Where's Julie? Over there. Okay. So one of you can come up. Okay, as she, as she moves up, I will introduce our State uh, Senator, Julie Lassa, and she will present the legislative citation. Uh, we want to thank them for the many years, and their predecessors for many years, for taking the effort to put together a beautiful uh, citation. Uh, we will provide this uh, a little later to uh, uh, Noel's uh, wife, Kate. Uh, I'll let you read it first. And was uh, very touched by the four speakers who uh, just provided their their commentary about Noel, and I think that it really sets the right tone. And we know that um, Noel really does deserve this honor uh, in being inducted into the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame. So it is in, indeed an honor for me. Um, to be able to read this citation of commendation to you. It says, whereas every year the Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame inducts a select group of individuals into the Hall of Fame to recognize the important contributions each has made to resource management in the state. And whereas Noel J. Cartwright has been chosen as a 2016 Wisconsin Conservation Hall of Fame inductee, for his lifelong commitment to help restore, improve, and protect our ecosystems at both the global and local level. And whereas Noel was born and raised in Southern Ohio and attended Miami University in Oxford, Ohio, before earning his master's and doctoral degrees from Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. And whereas Noel lived in rural Ozaki County with his wife Kate for 36 years, working for We Energies as senior terrestrial ecologist until his retirement in 2006 and continue to serve as its sole emeritus staffer until his death in November 2013, earning a reputation as the environmental conscious of the organization. And whereas Noel was a lifetime advisor to the Wisconsin DNR and U.S. Fish and Wildlife <coughs> Service on the ecology and management of Wisconsin's breeding birds, helping to establish the Wisconsin Bird Conservation Initiative to address the full spectrum of bird conservation in Wisconsin. And whereas Noel held leadership roles in a number of other conservation organizations, including the Wisconsin Society of Ornithology, the River Edge Bird Club, the Western Great Lakes Bird and Bat Observatory, and the Milwaukee County Avian Migration Monitoring Partnership and was involved in numerous other environmental efforts throughout the energy industry, as well as state and local conservation communities. And whereas Noel was a stalwart supporter and critical thinker in the development of state management plans to restore populations of osprey, bald eagles, peregrine falcons, trumpeter swans, and bluebirds, and whereas Noel was well known to many state residents as one of the voices on the Larry Mueller Show, on Wisconsin Public Radio, and a holiday call-in program about birds for many, many years. And whereas Noel leaves a legacy as an educator with a conservation ethic that was always upfront and conveyed to his audience his deep love of the natural world, and through his vast knowledge and passion, he inspired countless new conservationists over his long career. Now therefore, Senator Julie Lassa and Representative Katrina Shanklin do hereby honor Noel J. Cartwright for his lifelong commitment to the land and its resources and his critical role in connecting various conservation interests to preserving Wisconsin's natural landscape.
Thank you, Julie. I think even though we've listened to many speakers, this is one of the best summaries I've heard about Knowles' uh, accomplishments. I um, would encourage uh, those of you that have the time to take a, a brief look at the induction ceremony, I mean the induction citation. Uh, I think next year we'll actually try to get a picture of this early on and then have it put on the screen. At this time, we'll, we'll move to the unveiling of the, of the plaque. I would ask that Kate uh, please come forward and, and help with this. Uh, while Kate is coming forward, Kate is the wife of, of Noel Cutright. Um, I also wanted to mention uh, Carl Schwartz. Carl Schwartz and Betty Herman uh, took the lead on preparing the excellent biography and nomination materials. And uh, Carl, you might not get uh, recognized otherwise. Could you please just raise your hand so everybody know who Carl is? And As you know, the uh, walnut plaques stay in the Hall of Fame in Smithley Reserve in our gallery. I encourage you to go over there after the presentation uh, to, to, to look at these as well as others. Uh, a few years ago, we started a new tradition that was to make a replica of the plaque, which is here. And we'll present that to, to Kate uh, to add to your things at home. Thank you. spearheaded the whole nomination. Um, if you ever want to get nominated for anything, contact Carl because he just does this dynamite job of organizing everything and getting everything in and deadlines and all that. So thank you very much, Carl, and everyone who wrote a letter in support of this nomination. I, uh, as a person who waved goodbye to the man as he was off on yet another uh, quest to get something good done for the state of Wisconsin. <coughs> this is just a really wonderful honor. Thank you very much.